everyone and welcome to a very long expected and long overdue official review for The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies Extended Edition. And back in October, I think it was like the day after, uh, it was released for a one night showing in the theaters. I did kind of like a preliminary review. Uh, I told you guys everything that I had noticed uh, within the film and told you some of my initial thoughts, but since then I have not gone back and completed it. So today, we're going to be doing two, uh, three things. First of all, I'm going to be showing you the Blu-ray version, uh, show you everything that's inside there, and telling my thoughts a little bit. Uh, second, we're going to be looking at the final unexpected booklet that you can get on the OneRing.net. It's not on there, but there's a link to it on there. I, for I forget what the, the real website is. It's some Russian website, I believe. Hennetha Noon and then a bunch of Russian characters. Um, and finally, I'll be doing an official scene guide, and it'll probably be more in that area that I tell you my actual thoughts. Um, at the beginning, I'm mostly just going to show you the box and tell you what's on there and stuff. So let's go ahead and get to it. So I'll go ahead and start out with the DVD and box itself. As you probably already know, the Battle of the Five Armies Extended Edition was 2 hours and 20 minutes long. 20 minutes of extra footage have been added, which bumps it up to 2 hours and 40 minutes, which is still 20 minutes shorter than, or uh, on an average, it's 20 minutes shorter than the other films in the Hobbit trilogy, and quite a bit shorter than any of the Lord of the Rings extended editions. So, it, I mean, it's still a pretty long film with the extensions, and even without them, but um, for a Middle Earth film, it's kind of short. <laughs> so, that's the front, it's the same as on here. And by the way, this did come in some shrink wrap and a little cardboard thing. Uh, but that was, it was basically just um, this on the cardboard back because, you know, it's just like this on the back of the box art so you couldn't read all this and stuff. So that was nice that they included that so people who are looking to buy it can read up on it a little bit. Got some swords and a shield there. And this matches very nicely with the other two, which I have here. As you can see, they all have the same basic design. Let me get this back in here. Got a nice orangey auburn on this one, uh, greenish blue on Desolation, and a nice gray black for the darkest film in the trilogy, The Battle of the Five Armies. And of course, it's nice after all these years to be able to finally put them all together like this. Now there are some packs available now with the all three films in there. Some of them, you know, you can get it on just DVD, you can get just the theatrical versions together. And there is, I'm pretty sure there is, um, an extended edition Blu-ray combo pack. As of yet, there are no combo back packs with the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit together, but I have a feeling that's on the way. There are rumors circulating that on that pack, when it does come out eventually, that there may be some added things, maybe even some more deleted scenes and stuff. But Peter Jackson said that for the most part he's probably going to save that, anything that he does decide to include in the future for like a 25th anniversary edition or something which is still a long ways off. The first Lord of the Rings was released in 2001, so that would take us to 2026 just for Fellowship. That's that's quite a long ways away. Well, I guess it's only 10 years. It's not that bad. That'd be 27. <laughs> Hope, I think I'd still like The Hobbit by then. I've found that so far anyway, if you like something, um, then you're probably going to at least for the most part like it even when you're older. Cause it's, I mean, I know I'm only 17, but, like, for example, I liked Star Trek when I was 7, and I still like it now that I'm 17 a lot. Probably like it even more now. Anyway, back to the, the Hobbit and the Battle of the Five Armies and all that goodness. So it says, the epic conclusion to the Hobbit trilogy. Three-disc Blu-ray extended edition includes footage not seen in theaters, unless you were at the theater I was on October 13th, and hours of behind-the-scenes features, production stories, and more. That is the appendices part 11 and 12. Part 11 is entitled The Gathering Storm, The Chronicles of the Hobbit Part 3, and Part 12 is Here at Journey's End. Now, I've only seen little snippets of it so far. I've been into a lot of series lately, so I haven't sat down and started watching this all the way through, but of course I am going to do that at some point, because they're very entertaining, and I'm sure it's good. And I do know for a fact that um, you will see some deleted scenes on there that were not included in the extended edition. One of them in particular, which I'll talk about later in the scene guide, or at the end of the scene guide anyway, uh, is a really good scene, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sad that they didn't include it, because it's a really great scene. The only reason I can think of that they didn't include it is for continuity, because there's three different characters, Bard, Bilbo, and Gandalf, together in this scene, 
and it, it'd be kind of hard to get them in in the scene together uh, as the film is right now. But that's no excuse. <laughs> they need to do that. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look inside. Uh, oh, not going to show you that. Although I have already claimed it, so I don't think you could still get it. But just in case, uh, that's your ultraviolet code. You are going to get that on the back. And here is an advertisement for the Hobbit Kingdoms of Middle Earth. Unfortunately, it's an app. I'm not in the app games very much, so blah. The first disc is the Blu-ray movie, and it also includes, uh, as it says on the back here, New Zealand Home of Middle Earth Bar 3, but th that was on the theatrical versions as well. The other two discs are for each of the two parts of the appendices. We've got some nice artwork here. If you don't recognize that, well, you haven't seen the extended edition yet, obviously. Uh, there's Bilbo talking with the leaders about the Arkenstone and Dean's arrival there. So overall, uh, oh, and one thing, you probably know this already too, but the extended edition is rated R for some violence. The violence is mostly for the new war chariot scene, which I'll get into more later. It's really not that bad. I mean, if you're over, honestly, I'd say if you're over 10 or 12, you can probably watch it. It's not like for language or anything else, if you know what I mean. It's not any of that at all. So, I mean, and some people have a problem with it. I don't really... But, you know, whatever. Anyway, more on the actual scenes later. Let's go ahead and take a look at the unexpected booklet. So this, it's not really unexpected. The second two were actually kind of expected and really wanted, at least for me. This is a great idea someone had. Uh, since none of these came with, like, real pamphlets, with the scene guide and uh, guides to the appendices like the Lord of the Rings extended editions did, I think it's probably just to cut back on paper and be more economic and all that. But it was annoying, so they made these instead. Now, you can really go all out with these and print them on, you know, cardstock or whatever thick paper you like to give it an authentic feel. You know, I just, I, I might do that at some point, but for right now I just have it on regular paper, stapled it together. And it still looks really nice because they put a lot of work into this. Um, there's not too many things that I say, yeah, I might donate to that since they did a nice job, but, you know, I would consider donating to them for this. Because they did an excellent job on these. Um, I, I have no problems with it. It's 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 great. Uh, I've compared them to the Lord of the Rings ones in the past, so I'm not going to do that again today. But I will compare it with some of the, well, both of the other uh, unexpected pamphlets here. If I can get them out. The first one was a, a different size. I, I think I just cut it down that way so it would fit inside. Um... But for the most part, they're not going to fit in inside here. Uh, but they will fit inside of the sleeve next to the case. Anyway, I'll start with this one and then compare it. So we have a nice shield on the front and on the back, some ruins of Ravenhill, I believe that is. And it's got all the logos down here to make it look official. Inside, the special extended edition. I'm not going to read all this to you, but it basically just says what a nice job they did and includes over 20 new minutes and uh, new music from Howard Shore. Tells about the appendices a little bit in case you don't know what that's all about. And here we have the selected scene, which is probably the best part of these because um, if, uh, if you want to find out what's new and extended, you're either going to have to pull up the DVD where it does show you what's new and extended, or you're going to have to go on the internet and do some research. But with these, you don't have to. It tells you where all the new stuff is. Uh, one asterisk means a new scene, and two asterisks means an extended scene. Now you're probably, if you're not really familiar with this, you're probably studying this intently. No need to, because I'm going to go over all this in just a little bit. And here, another very nice inclusion is a guide to the appendices for each disc. Um, it shows you all the different menu options you're going to have, and the names of the different documentaries. So these are overall these are very well done. I'll show you the other two really quickly just to see how they compare. Now don't don't blame my cutting job. <laughs> um, just look at the design. So very similar, especially to the second one. That's mostly because of my cutting job though. So a very nice job. Uh, I don't know the names of the people who did this, but whoever you are, excellent job. Thank you so much. I'm glad that we have these three pamphlets. Uh, to include with our Hobbit Extended Edition collections. So, I am going to go ahead and get to the scene guide and my thoughts. Alright, on to the scene guide. 
I've pulled up a picture of the select the scene page from the unexpected booklet, and we'll put an arrow next to the scene that I'm talking about. If you'd like to skip this part because you're just here to hear my thoughts, which is flattering, check the description for a timecode link. Extension 1, Bard the Dragon Slayer, Extended Scene. Here we simply see a few new shots of Smaug flying around, including one where he nearly crashes into Bard. The bowman slides down a rooftop, but makes it back up in no time. All told, this extension only lasts about 25 to 30 seconds, but all Smaug footage is appreciated. Extension 2, Attack on Dol Guldur, Extended Scene. In this scene, we see a little more of what happens to Gandalf after the orc throws his cage around. He's taken to a pedestal, where the orc, who was the original design for Bolg, prepares to cut his finger off and the ring of fire along with it. Just then, Galadriel arrives and tries to reason with the orc. However, orcs aren't really reasonable fellows, so Galadriel ends up having to blast him into oblivion. There are also a few new shots strewn throughout the battle sequence. All told, about two and a half to three minutes extra. Extension 3. Summon our friends. As Gandalf appears to head back to the company and warn them of their impending doom, Radagast offers him his own staff since Gandalf was destroyed by Sauron in the previous film. Radagast warns him that it's quite temperamental, as we'll see later. About 20 to 30 seconds are added here. Extension 4, The Elven King's Eight, Extended Scene. Here we simply see an extra shot or two of the elves and Dale, about 10 seconds of extra footage. Extension 5, The Night Watch, New Scene. One of my favorite scenes from the Extended Edition, we get a much-needed character moment, where Bofur and Bilbo exchange some dialogue. It was nice to see them being friends again, since they hadn't talked much since the cave scene in an unexpected journey. We also see a few more shots of Bilbo sneaking around and preparing to leave on his mission to barter with the Arkenstone. This new scene lasts a little over two minutes. Extension 6, An Honest Burglar, Extended Scene. Here we get some added dialogue between Thorin, Thranduil, and Bard, including an awesome reference to Ecthelion, the father of Lord of the Rings character and future steward of Gondor, Denethor. The other dwarves grow impatient and restless, but Thorin continues to wait for Dane. This added footage lasts a little less than a minute. Extension 7, Dane Ironfoot, Extended Scene. In one of the largest extensions from the whole movie, we see much more of Dane's initial arrival before the Werewyrms show up. We see that the dwarves are now armed with many goats and numerous ballista-like machines. Dane hurls a few extra insults before the elves and dwarves actually begin fighting. The ballistas fire strange but awesome twirling arrows that spin so fast that they break the arrows that the elves are shooting. They continue to fight until the ground begins shaking and the worms burst from the ground. This awesome scene lasts almost five minutes. Extension 8 the clouds burst. Extended scene. Peter Jackson and company decided that we needed even more trolls, so Azog sends forth a bunch of them, which begin violently attacking the dwarves and elves. We get this extra stomping, shooting, crushing action for a little less than a minute. This scene gets fairly violent, but not nearly as graphic as subsequent scenes. Extension 9. The Darkest Hour. Extended scene. We get some more violent action of Dane and Thranduil brutally attacking orcs, an eyeless, handless, legless troll with chains for limbs swinging his artificial appendages around. It's beginning to become clear that many of these cuts were made simply because of the rating association having problems with it. This extension lasts about 30 seconds. Extension 10. To the King. Extended scene. Here we get some added footage of the dwarves attacking orcs and trolls, mostly focusing on the comedic escapades of Biffer, Bofur, and Bomber attacking a troll. All told, this lasts a little over a minute. Extension 11, A Call to Arms, Extended Scene. Some footage of the people of Late Town racing out of Dale's Hall and fighting is added here, which lasts about 20 seconds. Extension 12, Thorin's Plan, Extended Scene. We get some added conversation between Dane and Thorin on the battlefield here, which leads up to the following War Chariot scene. This lasts about 15 to 30 seconds. Extension 13, The War Chariot, New Scene. In what is probably the longest extension from the whole film, we get a very graphic scene of the dwarves riding a war chariot to Ravenhill. As they race across the frozen river, trolls, orcs, and wargs assault them from all sides, and meet gruesome, bloody ends upon the cart's deadly spinning axles. This scene certainly isn't necessary, but adds a bit of morbid fun to the film. This scene lasts about five minutes. Extension 14. Courage and Cowardice. Extended scene. This short scene packs a lot into it. First we get to see Percy, the guy who lets Bard into Lake Town in the previous film, wildly shooting at a troll. Then we cut to Gandalf, who is having some major complications with his new staff, while a troll is attacking him. There's a lot of trolls in this movie.
Alfred walks into the scene and meets his demise as he is accidentally catapulted into the troll's mouth. Although many fans were glad to see Alfred die, this wasn't exactly one of my favorite scenes, but more on that later. This extension lasts a little over a minute. Extension 15, An Unforeseen Remedy, New Scene Another one of my favorites, this scene, which lasts a little less than a minute, goes back to the Bee Brothers, Biffer, Bofer, and Bomber, as they continue battling. Biffer gets his axe head embedded in an orc, and an awesome comedy scene ensues as Bomber and Bofer try to help him out. The axe head eventually pops out of Biffer's head, and we finally get to hear Biffer and Bomber speak. Easily the funniest scene from the whole movie, and one of my favorite additions. Extension 16, The Battle at Raven Hill, Extended Scene Peter Jackson continues his trend of impossible Legolas stunts by having him cut off the head of every orc marching up Ravenhill while he's hanging upside down from a flying bat. Top that, Gimli. His fight with Bolg is extended a bit as well. This is probably due to the fact that Bolg gets a knife embedded in his hand, which the Reading Association might not have liked. These extensions last about 30 seconds. Extension 17. To the Death. Extended Scene. A number of very brief extensions are added to this scene. First we get to see a shot of some more orcs approaching from behind Azog as he battles with Thorn. Next we get an extra shot of Legolas twisting his knife into Bolg's head. Hurrah, I guess. Finally we get the extra Bayorn that Peter Jackson promised. All eight seconds of it. We simply see Bayorn in bear form killing orcs a bit longer. This is quite a letdown, unfortunately. All told, this, is, this lasts less than 30 seconds. Extension 18. King Under the Mountain. New Scene. The final extension we get is the promised funeral scene, where Thorn, Feely, and Keely are mourned, and Dane Ironfoot is crowned the new king. Originally, Gandalf was supposed to give a longer speech than he does in the final product, but it, along with some other scenes, were cut for some reason. This scene lasts about a minute and a half. So, those are all the additions from the Battle of the Five Armies Extended Edition. All told, there are 14 extended scenes and 4 new scenes, totaling about 20 minutes compared to 6 extended scenes, 2 new scenes, and 13 minutes total of new material in an unexpected journey, and 11 extended scenes, 3 new scenes, and 25 minutes total from the Desolation of Smaug. you notice that the Battle of the Five Armies has more new and extended scenes than the Desolation of Smaug, even though the latter has a longer total runtime. Well, this is not only because the many extensions were made longer in Desolation of Smaug, but also because they have more quality in the second film. To be brutally honest, The Battle of the Five Armies is my least favorite extended edition out of all six Hobbit Lord of the Rings films. Battle of the Five Armies is my least favorite film period as well, but I thought the extensions might bump it up a bit. Sadly, they didn't. I was expecting so much more from this extended edition. More scenes of Bayorn's backstory, Gandalf finding a Palantir, and Bilbo's return journey being expanded upon were all alluded to but weren't in it. Instead, 75% of the new stuff we got was just more battles. More battles that really weren't all that necessary. In addition, most of the added battle scenes were absurdly ridiculous, even by Peter Jackson's standards. It's not to say there's nothing good here. The added Dol Guldur scenes, the Bilbo and Bofors conversation, Dane's arrival, the Unforeseen Remedies scene, and the funeral are all great. Even the War Chariot scene is pretty fun. But everything else just felt a little tacked on and kind of unnecessary, a feeling that I'd never experienced before with Peter Jackson's extended editions. There is a reason for this, though. Apparently Warner Brothers withheld a full ten minutes of extra scenes for some strange reason. Perhaps they want to wait and release these in a future anniversary edition or something. In any case, it's quite annoying. Some of these lead scenes are included in the appendices, including a wonderful scene where Bilbo talks to Bard and Gandalf about Dale's future and plants his acorn as a token of goodwill. This scene is possibly better than any of the actual extended scenes for me. I'm quite upset that it was not included. There are a couple of other deleted scenes hidden in the appendices as well. So in the end, would I recommend the Battle of the Five Armies extended edition? Yes but only if you're a big fan of these movies. Casual moviegoers will probably become tired of the extended battle scenes quite quickly. In fact, a theatrical edition of this film was praised for its relatively short runtime. I feel pretty confident that if the extended edition had been the theatrical edition, the film would not have been liked so much. So don't get me wrong, this extended edition isn't all bad by any means. However, it did leave me wishing for some more non-battle scenes and, of course, those extra 10 minutes. Well, thanks for tuning in to my complete Battle of the Five Armies Extended Edition Review, Unexpected Booklet Review, and Scene Guide video. Check the description for a link to my Scene Guide video for the first two films. Be sure to let me know what you thought of the Extended Edition in the comments below. Also, if you happen to be an X-Files fan, stay tuned for my comprehensive review of the complete miniseries event next Wednesday, as well as video game playthroughs, leggy reviews, and other special videos published weekly. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.